uh, we'll be speaking more with Joe and as we go along here. But Tim Keo, welcome to the South Coast Business Update, and welcome back. I suppose one might say to the South Coast. Uh, you have an interesting background. You've been a, quite a traveling man in your work. Uh, tell us uh, what uh, what is your background and what's brought you here. Well, first, let me say thanks for uh, having me on. Um, I actually grew up in Marion. Um, spent uh, my days playing on the waters in Sipican Harbor. Mm. Um, my father worked for Edie and Duff, which was a boat building company in Mount Boise. Mm. So it's in your blood. It's been, uh, I've, it's been the industry's been in the, the family for this will mm-hmm. be the second generation. But, mm-hmm. um, um, yeah, so having been surrounded by boats and boating, and um, I had the benefit of working for the Marion Harbor Master during college. Um, at which point I determined that a career in the marine industry was uh, well suited for me. I often tell mm-hmm. the story of uh, when I was working for the Harbor Master's office. I had a friend who was uh, working landscaping. And he was raking seaweed off the beaches and the shores of Marion Harbor. Uh, mm-hmm. And I got to uh, watch him from a boat mm. and at that point determined that um, there was something pretty cool about the marine industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hadn't quite figured it out what it was, but uh, it took a little while. Uh, good fortune for you to, to have grown up here and been able to experience it and learn. And, and now you're, you're uh, self-employed uh, with uh, Doc Promotions. Tell us what it is that you offer. So fairly and, unique, and, in my opinion. And, and yeah, by the and, way, and, folks, and maybe, I'll Tim, give you, Tim's one of the newest uh, members of the Chamber of Commerce. I might add. I'll give you a little background. So I, I, w- I grew up here. I worked uh, summers during college in, in Marion. Um, I graduated and started working for a marina management company, and I actually moved to St. Thomas down in the Virgin Islands. That must have been tough duty. And it was uh, well before the wheels touched down on the job interview. I said I was going to sign up. I didn't care what the job entailed. But um, mm-hmm. So I, I worked in St. Thomas for two years running a mega yacht facility down there. Um, after that, it was transferred up to the corporate office of the management company uh, that was based in South Florida, down in uh, the offices in Boca. Uh, it was very close to Fort Lauderdale and West Palm Beach, which are two kind of major hubs of uh, the yachting industry. And I was down there doing, uh, ran the consulting division for the management company. Um, so we were doing market feasibility studies economic feasibility studies, design analysis, operational analysis uh, for projects all throughout the Caribbean, up and down uh, the eastern seaboard on the west coast, uh, a little bit into Canada, some into Central America. But, um, yeah, and everything from inland lakes to offshore mega yacht destinations, I was able to see a lot of different marinas um, and work with a lot of different projects, including working with municipalities and what I refer to as nautical destinations, which mm-hmm. are places people want to visit by boat. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of times there'll be a new marina that's being developed, and um, I would work with the developer to kind of come up with a plan to say, okay, well, here are the avenues from a marketing standpoint that you need to utilize in order to attract boats, to get them to come in out of their normal cruising patterns into what I would refer to as an emerging market, mm. which would be a new destination. Um, or just capturing or expanding an existing market to attract more boats into the area. Hmm. And so I did that for 12 years based down in Florida. And, it, you know, as, as Florida ran its course for me, I, I started looking at, you know, where I wanted to live. Um, and this obviously being home, it made sense to make Absolutely. the transition back up. Um, and so I moved uh, back up to uh, Westport uh, last June. As I'm still working on projects, uh, largely down in Florida and the Caribbean, have slowly started to um, get, get some inroads here up in the Northeast and, mm-hmm. and specifically in the local market here. I, I think it's very exciting. We, we look at uh, all the many different opportunities that, that may exist for us to, to build our local economy and to build uh, what we have here based on what we do have to offer. And sometimes uh, we, some of us, commiserate that we're a well, well-kept secret here. Uh, and, that's 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 uh, funny you mention that. Cause so, as as I was working through how to move back up last year, um, and actually got the opportunity to talk with a number of marine industry businesses here locally in Fairhaven and New Bedford, and and largely what are referred to as New Bedford Harbor, but that includes you know the surrounding communities and and moving on into Westport and down to um, you know down to Marion and Wareham and those other regions but you know there is just a tremendous amount of wealth of of knowledge of product and service in this market that is largely um, 
overlooked, I think, from from the community. Mm. You know, when I when I look at and I, I see this in a lot of places where I go do work, there's a disconnect between the community and the marine industry. Um, you know, and when you start looking at the industry that's here from the marine perspective, you know, you, you go out into the uh, business park out west um, or I guess yeah. out north. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got Edson, uh, Imtra, and Schaefer. Those three companies have impacts on boats and parts on boats throughout the entire world, and they're based, you know, 15 minutes up the road. Mm. You know, you look at the facilities at Fairhaven Shipyard and, um, you know, the the ability, the, the – the service providers that are here, the, the knowledge, the technical aspects of it, and then the attractions of, of New Bedford and, and Fairhaven and walking around the towns. There's a lot here, but as you said, it, what we, we said on the map was that it's, it's hidden in plain sight. And I've, I've heard that used a number of times. Is the map online? So I, I've, if the map is online. It's a terrific uh, little uh, publication here. And so, and so basically I was approached by a, uh, a publication called The Triton, which is nautical news for captains and crew of, of large yachts. Mm. It's a South Florida-based publication, but they have distribution throughout uh, the Northeast mm-hmm. and throughout the U.S. and over into the Med. And they had a concept for what they're referred to as a land chart, which is basically a map of a particular port which highlights the services and amenities and attractions geared towards boaters. So when a boater arrives into a particular port, they have access, you know, easy access to the information. So, or, or he or she may decide to go to a port based on the information, right? So there's, there's the access, yeah. so when, when right. the boaters are here, but then it can also be used as a promotional tool to attract boats into mm-hmm. the market. Mm-hmm. So that works on both levels, you're mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so we take this and we put it into a new port. We get it into the islands in the Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. And throughout all the marinas up and down the eastern seaboard, as a promotional tool to invite them to come into Bedford. Mm-hmm. And then when they do arrive, they'd have a tool that they can use to then access the, the services that are available to them. Uh, it's spectacular. I uh, just opened my eyes. Uh, I, uh, I, I wonder how, how much um, uh, you speak about our wonderful hurricane barrier here as being a, such a great a way to safe harbor uh, against a storm because... We are the lar- I think it's the largest uh, in the eastern seaboard, is my understanding. I, b- I believe it. It's, I don't know the where it fits in, but it, I know New Bedford Harbor is, is the largest commercial seaport on the eastern seaboard, and that hurricane barrier allows that to happen because mm-hmm. without it, you know, you don't have calm water and safe water. We, we saw last year uh, a number of boats coming into the harbor during Hurricane Irene. Yes. Um, you know, it, it's it's known as a hurricane destination mm-hmm. what we're trying to do is, is make it a, a logistical destination yes. for these boats you know and tell them that they can come in here and they can get you know a thousand or ten thousand gallons of fuel from sea fuels down that fuels the entire commercial fleet of, of fishing boats yes. um you know they can provision at sid Wainers, which is down you know i mean it's got an unbelievable place that most of these yachts the larger boats we're talking about you know are, are using a sid Wainer, but they're in, based in newport Mm-hmm. Now we can just explain to them that you know they can, you know when they get in their car and they can drive ten minutes up the road and they can walk through that store, um, and really show them what we have here. Um, you know, and, all, and then all the restaurants that are in there. You've got you know you mentioned Cork earlier and um, you know Paisans and uh, yeah, well, the, you know that that whole block right, the there, Ro- Rose Alley Ale Union. House, and, mm-hmm. um, and those guys actually just did a whole. They're doing something to the waterfront down in South Dartmouth. I don't know if you've, you've, yes. you've seen that yes. with the mm-hmm. Cordia provisions right. there. And Jay Lanigan and his group. Yeah, yeah. so they're, you know, they're, they're, they're really taking that, what I always call that disconnect of the waterfront and the community, and they're, they're tying them together. And I think yeah. that's really, yeah. really yeah. awesome. That, that's where we're, our, where we're going. And I tell you, I, I, I'm well acquainted with the Baltimore Inner Harbor. Absolutely. And for many yeah. years here, I said, oh, you know that's we can do that, and we can do it better in some respects. Uh, I'm really delighted that you're here to speak about this because I'm sure this is something that uh, is not too well known. No, I know, and, and again, it's you know there's there's and that's where chamber membership comes in because <laughs> you know you have the largest chamber south of Boston here, and uh, you, you, the information about you about your company be widely distributed uh, as chamber membership allows. You know, I, I mean, you know, just looking at from the from an industry perspective, in Northeast Maritime, again, I'm not sure if, if people are aware of the school that's in Fairhaven. Um, 
but they have got some facilities in there that are unmatched in in the industry in terms of uh, the licensing that they can provide for professional captains and crew and sailors and you know from a commercial aspects and recreational aspects um, you know they've got a great reputation in the industry they're right in downtown fall river or sorry fair haven mm -hmm. um, but you know the local community it, it doesn't tie in it doesn't see that these guys are hosting courses where students are coming in from all over the world hmm. attending a course there staying in the hotels going to restaurants at night buying taxis you know the economic impact that the marine industry has on the local community is you know if 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 something like this can help draw attention to it i think it's 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 important for everybody oh absolutely you know the number of jobs the, um, the taxes you know that marine industry businesses pay to into the local community is is tremendous and then obviously there's so much uh, uh, due uh, appropriate attention paid to our waterfront and, and all the construction that's going on now and these plans have been in the works for many years mm -hmm. so uh, it would seem to me that your uh, your business enterprise is very timely now with con uh, rec uh, with regard to that what the, what uh, web address would you want to offer as a way for someone to kind of take a look more closely at uh, well certainly so you can go to doc promotions with an s dot com um, and you can look at the land chart. I've got it there underneath the services page. Um, it's a pretty easy website to navigate. Um, and then, you know, for additional information on the Triton, it's the-triton.com. Mm -hmm. um, and those two, you know, you'll be able to get information mm -hmm. about the land chart. But, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, just keep an eye out for it in, uh, in the shops and retails. We're going to put it in all the marinas and marine retailers, the restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so pick a copy up and... You know, I've got some sponsorship available that's still uh -huh. on to, on the map, which mm -hmm. you know gives you a you know a, a one by six inch by one by six inch button, um, and then a locator button onto the map. Um, yes, so we've, we've got Very a few effective. of those a few of those spots still available. Uh, we print ten thousand copies of these things, and you know we're going to blast them out into uh, into the hands of boaters and hopefully yes. dry, increase traffic yeah. and um, you know increase awareness of the industry in the South Coast region. I think it's wonderful. It's spectacular. This is really very exciting. Uh, this is what we need and what we look for: innovation in our in our uh, endeavors to improve our our, our local e economic circumstances. Huh? And I'm always reminded that uh, you know our company began with entrepreneurs, uh, began with uh, people being creative and uh, uh, innovative, and of course, particularly uh, with agriculture and, and some of the trades. But uh, you, you had a, a very interesting personal experience uh, not so long ago. Was it a week and a half ago, two weeks ago? What did you do? So, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I'll tell you. I, I, Tim Keogh, <laughs> a man of, man of many, many guys. Uh, when, when I first started looking at a career in the marine industry, I went and I sat down with Hank Keene out at uh, Edson Corporation. And Hank sat me down and said, look, you know, a career in the marine industry, you're, you're going to meet some amazing people. You're going to be able to go to some amazing destinations, but you're not going to make Wall Street money. You know, and mm -hmm. we had an additional mm -hmm. conversation to that, but th those those are the, the the points that really stuck out to me. Um, and I actually had to chuckle last week, and I emailed Hank, and I said, you know, I had the opportunity um, from someone I met in the industry, a good friend of mine who's a captain of a 110 foot uh, sailing yacht. Um, who invited me to go to St. Bart's, which is a, an amazing place down mm -hmm. in the Caribbean. I flew mm -hmm. into St. Martin and took the ferry over to St. Bart's to sail in the St. Bart's bucket, which is, um, well, uh, there were 47 yachts that raced in this bucket regatta. Um, sizes range from 100 to 160 feet in length, 180 feet in length. Mm. Uh, three days of racing, so we practiced Wednesday, Thursday, raced Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, so I got to go to someplace amazing with good friends that I met in the industry and play with Wall Street's money. And I felt that that was, you know, as, as good as a compromise as, as you can make. You may not be able to make it, but uh, uh, we actually we came in second in our class. There were four classes. Uh, mm -hmm. We came in third overall out of 47 boats. That's fantastic, you know. My opportunity to <laughs> make applause to you and to Joe Klein for all that Joe's done in his career. Uh, this is um, this is what we want to hear. You know, people excited about their lives and 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 doing what they love and finding what they love, 
uh, and then as we were speaking earlier about choices, you know, we uh, we have an opportunity to help the students in our area and do the same thing, find what they love uh, by uh, encouraging them to continue with their ed- their high school education with an eye on getting further education and uh, and thereby enriching their lives. Uh, yeah. It's uh, Push them to pursue a career in the marine industry, yeah. you know, or you know whatever yeah. whatever industry gets them. You know, the golf mm-hmm. course. You know, certainly, um, you know, taking a recreation and turning it into a profession sometimes is there's there's some downside to it. Mm-hmm. And how often do you play golf? Very rarely. <laughs> I've gotten worse and worse every year, Tim. So, <laughs> well, even those who play every year, yeah. even those of us who play every year, get worse and worse at times. <laughs> I don't get to go boating as much as I like. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, huh? yeah. Isn't that interesting? The further you get into it, the less, yeah. the less you get to do it. Well, we're going to continue with this uh, conversation in just a moment after uh, another commercial break from Mondays 1 to 2. But uh, I really uh, have appreciated uh, having you two fellows on on the show today um, to, to discuss what you do because I think it's such vibrancy here in our community. And uh, we were talking as, at the break about how interesting it is to, to have moved from your um, recreational activities into your careers from them. I mean, how, how good is that? Uh, uh, yet uh, you, you, you uh, both mentioned you don't have as much time for those <laughs> recreational activities now that you're providing them for other people. It's it's it. You don't realize that you're not going to have as much time to do that kind of thing when you get into it. But um, it's it's fun to either a help people do it or you know just organize it or just be around it. It's it's uh, you know the flexibility of you know for me going inside and either you know seeing what's going on in the restaurant or walking outside and watching people play golf or take a buzz around the golf course. You know that kind of mm-hmm. offsets the lack of golf time that I have these days. But uh, yeah. you know I'm sure it kind of parallels with you know, Tim you, too are you uh, you also offer lessons don't yeah you? we do lessons I don't teach that much anymore no. if at all no. no so I kind of got nice. got away from that but uh, one of our, our local pro Greg Denny who I'm sure anybody that's listening probably knows him he's one of those guys that knows knows everybody he still teaches a lot so mm-hmm. yeah yeah and uh, there's nothing like you know if you haven't played the game for I, one of my first lucrative jobs was as a caddy mm-hmm. so i got to know golf and the course well that way sure you know i volunteered for my dad but i, I also did work that yeah. way and i, I had uh, more bankroll than most of the kids sure in my that's a great way to that time. you learn some life lessons you meet oh, a lot of good sure people did. there's no question about it yeah it was a, I, vivid memories yep of I, such, think, such I, I think the same thing on the docks too i mean you know you to be able to experience and watch people having a good time, you know, helping them, facilitating them, recreating. There's a sense of accomplishment there, and um, you know, certainly the the boating lifestyle is a, um, you know, it's contagious, you know, mm-hmm. and really, you know, it's one of the things that the industry is battling right now. Is we've got an aging population of boaters and an mm-hmm. aging population of boats. Mm-hmm. We're, we're we're trying to fill in that uh-huh. gap of that 30 to 50 year old demographic. Wow. That, um, is just not there in the numbers. Um, you Would know, you I, say economic circumstances? Well, I, I think that has something to do with it. Um, I think there's a perception issue sometimes with boating that, you know, it's it's um, for a different class, of, mm. you know, or, or whatever mm. it may be, which it's, it's not the case. I mean, if you look at Massachusetts, you know, 85% of the registered boats in Massachusetts are under 25 feet in length. Is that you know, right? So when we talk about boating, we talk about everything from kayaking, um, you know, to having a nine-foot dinghy running around the docks to, uh, you know, up into it, obviously including mega yachts. But, um, you know, from a, from a local standpoint, um, certainly, you know, the more that we can get the, a younger demographic into the boating lifestyle, um, you know, the the stronger the industry can be and, and certainly the future of the industry. Interesting. And so there are a number of ways that uh, you and your company could, could support that and other other uh, inst- uh, educational institutions. Uh, we do have a community boating organization, for example. I don't know if you're familiar with that yet uh, in New Bedford, but uh, there's a, a, a method by which we teach young folks uh, the, the skills and, and the yeah, which safety is, measures. Well, that's, you know, that, which is excellent. You know, yeah. I mean, the... The, on the national level, the National Marine Manufacturers Association, uh, which represents all the boat builders and, and uh, deal, a lot of the dealers, um, has a program that they're calling uh, Discover Boating. And you can get information about boating. And, you know, they've got things like um, 
There's a spousal conversion kit, <laughs> um, which is one of the more popular tools that they have on their website. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Wish we had more term, more time on this. Well, I often have said, if we only had another hour, yeah. you know, there's so much we could get into. I would certainly love there's it. There's a lot of parallels that Tim and I can draw. I think. Yeah, <laughs> same, yeah. same idea on the golf course as well. Uh-huh. But, but I'll just real quick. It's yeah. d- discoverboating.com. Uh-huh. Um, so anyone interested in, in getting out on the water, um, if you own a boat, take people that are, don't own boats out onto your boat. As I said, with the boating lifestyle mm-hmm. is um, it's contagious. So. You know, I'm thinking uh, we only have now a minute and two seconds, a minute left. So, But I'll just offer my final thought on what you were saying there. Maybe we should have a business after hours on a marina sometime. We haven't done that. I know, think that would be a uh, great in, venue. In the Chamber of Commerce. Um, so here we come to a, conclu- uh, a close, uh, uh, not an ending, but a, it's another beginning. Um, uh, for those who don't know, Dave Alves, our uh, counselor at large in New Bedford, is going to be filling in for Ken Pittman beginning uh, at 2 o'clock uh, after the news. And uh, he'll be doing so this week until the national broadcasts kick in next week. Uh, I want to thank the listeners, uh, all of my guests over the years, hundreds of people. Um, it's been a tremendous uh, growing experience for me as well. And uh, I, uh, I want to thank Fernando Garcia for his great support, the fine folks here at WBSM 1420 AM, and all the chamber staff and volunteers that have helped along the way. And, uh, well, Godspeed. Another day. <laughs>